Spotwood Church of the Brethren online. We are a church celebrating diversity, strengthened by God, transformed by the Holy Spirit to serve and unify in the name of Jesus. My name is Jennifer Keeney Scar, and I have the pleasure of serving as your pastor. I will also be leading us in this little worship service this morning. I know we aren't together as we normally are on Sunday mornings, and that is still a bit strange to process. <laughs> um, however, I invite you to take a moment and think about all our sisters and brothers um, from all over our communities and imagine them with you right now. Imagine them listening to my voice along with you in their kitchens and living rooms and dining rooms, committed to worshiping together, even though we are apart. That's a really powerful and comforting image for me, and I hope it is for you too. Stay tuned at the end of this video for some of our um, announcements and some reminders. I'm not going to do those here, but at the end. And instead, I'm going to lead us into our greeting time. Now, normally for our greeting time, we stand up from the pews and we walk around, we shake hands, we hug, we check in with people, see how things are going with people. But since you're watching this video, you know we're practicing social distancing. But even though we're practicing social distancing, we are not practicing social isolation. And so I'm going to invite you into a greeting practice. For our greeting this morning, we're going to practice something I'm going to call postcards from the wilderness. It's simple. You just have to think of someone uh, you'd like to connect with, someone you'd like to say hi to today, and then you take a moment and you email them. You write them a card, you Facebook message them, or shoot them a little text message and say, hello. You can tell them a little bit about what your wilderness experience is like right now from where you're at. Um, you can ask them to reply back with similar information, or you can just let them know that you love them, you're thinking about them, and you're hoping they're okay. So you can either pause the video right here, right now, and take care of that, or you can let the video roll and spend a few moments this week greeting one another. Once you've had a chance to do that, from our individual places in this wilderness, let us prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the, the prelude generously offered to us by a mutual kumquat off their album, For the Beauty of the Earth. Take 
make him seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. invocation prayer this morning, I'd like to introduce you to the practice of breath prayer. Sarah Bessie, an author and person of faith, reminded her followers of this kind of prayer earlier this week. She offered it as a simple practice to help ground us in moments of anxiety and fear. The link to her blog post where she talks about these prayers is in the description of this video below. To begin a breath prayer, Close your eyes and imagine that you are in a safe place. Perhaps you are in our sanctuary, full of all the people who love and support you. Maybe you imagine yourself out in the woods, by a lake, around a big, beautiful table. Once you find yourself in this safe place, you choose one or two lines of prayer. The two lines that I've chosen for us this morning uh, were offered by Sarah Bessie in her blog and come from Philippians 4-7. Peace of Christ, guard my heart and mind. And it works by when you, it, when you inhale, you say, peace of Christ, peace of Christ, guard my heart and mind. So let's pray that together. Take a breath in with me. Peace of Christ, breathe out, guard my heart and mind. Breathe in. Peace of Christ, breathe out. Guard my heart and mind. Once more. Breathe in. Peace of Christ, breathe out. Guard my heart and mind. You can repeat this prayer as many times as you like. And if you find yourself feeling a bit anxious or feel fearful over the week to come, I encourage you to remember this prayer and to allow Christ's peace to wash over you. We've come now to the time in our service where we traditionally offer one another our joys and our concerns. So instead of passing the mic around this morning, I encourage you to take a moment and email any joys or concerns you have from the week to trotwoodcobrethren at gmail.com with the subject line joy or concern. If you don't have access to email, you're welcome to call, um, to call those into the church office. And please indicate when you do if we may share your joy or concern with others. I will be composing an email on Tuesday with any joys and concerns that are okay to share with the community so that we can continue to be in prayer with one another throughout the week. As you consider what joy or concern you'd like to email or call us, let us listen to our call to prayer from the Walking Roots Band off their album Prayers for the Church. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this. 
this day our daily bread as we forgive others please forgive and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from me Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our day. We forgive others, please forgive, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. prayer this morning comes also from Sarah Bessie from the bottom of that same blog I mentioned earlier where she talks about breath prayers. I've adapted her blessing into a prayer for us to use this morning. Will you pray with me? O Holy One, who like a mother hen gathers us all under her wings, May the peace of Christ give us a renewed hope and wisdom. May we find the strength already within us to be enough. May your holy grace be sufficient for us. May we find a deep breath when the air around us is thin. May we grow in compassion in these days. May we love well not in spite of these anxious times, but because of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to be doing our sermon time a little differently this morning, and that we're going to be using an outside resource to guide our questions and our pondering. And that resource is... Holy Manna! written by Paula Bowser, who is a member of our church. I know many of you have been following along with this devotional this season, and so we're just going to take a moment and go through it together this morning. And so, as we go through this together, we will take time to read the scripture, which comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you shall live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think? was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers. He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. 
For our devotional, Paula writes, Tested all the time, Jesus flips the script and tests a lawyer with a parable about mercy, stereotypes, and surprises. When have you been helped? When have you stopped to help a stranger or passed someone by? And then Paula offers an original poem. I remember when the wheels came off at Pike's Peak. We were on our way to the Garden of the Gods. He appeared out of nowhere to help us. He wore a Duck Dynasty beard and a t-shirt with skeletons. It was a dangerous intersection on a busy road. He retrieved our wheel where it lay in the adjacent lane. His skeletons were holding pistols and smoking weed. I've already called dispatch, and they should be here soon. I couldn't see his eyes because of his shades. He was not what you'd expect in an angel. I'll stay with you until the police arrive. I wondered if angels carry cell phones these days. His call went through and the blue lights appeared. He waved away my thanks and slipped away. I've been here before, he said, and someone helped me. I remember when the wheels came off at Pike's Peak. The wheels have certainly come off our community this week, and I find myself so grateful for our sister Paula's words. As we figure out how to be a servanthood of all believers for one another during this period of social distancing, I invite you to engage in the following two questions. You can do this by pulling out a journal or a scrap piece of paper and taking some notes on your thoughts, or you can call someone up as part of the greeting practice we talked about earlier and chat about these questions together. And these two questions are, in what ways have you experienced mercy this week? And the other is, in what ways have you shown mercy to others? So I invite you here to either pause the video and journal on that a bit, or pause and have a conversation with someone, or just take a moment and, um, and ponder those questions for yourself. In what ways have you experienced mercy this week? And in what ways have you shown mercy to others? Dear ones, it has been a joy to worship with you this morning. Even though we couldn't be together in person, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you for tuning into this video and being present with each other in this way. As we wrap up our worship time together, I'm going to offer you the same blessing I've been offering to us all Lent because it feels especially meaningful to me now as well, given that we're not meeting in this time of wilderness. So I offer you this blessing, which is from a tune from the Celtic tradition and words from the Book of Common Prayer. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he shelter you through the wilderness protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again to our doors. Go in peace. Mm -hmm. Shine.